I play and sing Richard Nixon. And right, I'm Pat Nixon, his wife. I remember it quite clearly. I was in, in school. It was an enormous event for America. We were all, it was all very, very hush-hush. And it was sort of, you know, push at the last minute where he went. I don't know if you remember. I don't remember it at all. I, I remember seeing footage uh, probably on the mm. news because I'm, I'm much younger than he is. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, actually. It's true. But I, yeah. I do remember, of course, this was a, an event that, you know, the, the two countries had not really communicated for yeah. 20 years at least. And so it was an incredibly important uh, rapprochement, a, a kind of a gathering. And it was important also in that television brought the whole thing mm. to the world. This was extremely revolutionary. Uh, and he talks about it, you know, it's yesterday in America, what we're doing today, and to have Pat Nixon walking up and down the Great Wall on television where Joe Q sitting in Ohio went, wow, that's my first lady. This had never happened before. It's interesting to see that she, because he was in meetings the whole time, she was actually out amidst the mm. public and dressed. It becomes very important than the fashion statement that a first lady makes, and she had red, which is the color of, of, uh, China. of, of China and happiness. And she made a huge impression on the public. Uh, so she was actually the one who, I think, did the most good in the, uh, in the immediate moment for the visit. I think so. On the other hand, I'd also get the feeling that this production is trying to be, and it's been happening more and more, that the Nixon story is now coming, the, the China story is becoming less historismus, and more historical context of, of the personal elements. Um, you know, we're not going to be completely accurate to what happened the night of the dinner. We're not going to be completely accurate to this. Or the, but it's really a story about normal people changing the face of history. And welcome to opera. <laughs> and I think, I think John Adams uh, yeah. really intended, and, and of course, you know, all of the creative team intended for this to be a, a, a personality mm. um, sort of di deep dive. Who were these people and how did they end up in these positions? I just want to say something about Alice Goodman because I think this, the, the text is so extremely beautiful mm. and exquisite, um, certainly for Pat. They've given Pat Nixon a, a vision for something that's, I, I would say, particularly feminine in a way, because she sees more than anyone the potential for these two nations to come together, mm. collaborate, and really become friends, which is how I feel about my musical friends in China. In the aria, which is eight minutes long, there aren't many arias that are that long. The way Valentina has staged it, and I won't give it away, but it, it, it's turned it into something absolutely joyful about her idea about the relationship with China and the people, which is what she is experiencing on the street. And they use her exact words, the things that she said mm -hmm. about being there with the, in the clinic, the medical clinic, with, with children, visiting a school, et cetera, and visiting a pig farm. So it's, it's really, a, a, that particular scene, I think, has a, a lot of joy in it. I do want to say something about Richard Nixon and the character, because exactly what you were saying about Goodman, she captures beautiful human and humanistic expressions in a couple of the characters. Nixon in this piece we see as an extremely pragmatic, almost em embarrassed at times at how personal it starts to become. No, no, we're not gonna do that, we're gonna stay, stay focused. So I think that the personalities, what I really wanna say, I think the personalities that our public will experience on stage are pretty riveting. I think it, it, it's not just, it's not one dimension, it's extremely three and six mm. dimensional. And I think Valentina's captured that quite well. What I do like about this production, especially in the third act, is that I think people will be surprised to see 
Richard and Pat Nixon as a loving couple, which they were. They were deeply devoted to one another. But we're not usually playing people who are live who are who who lived in our lifetimes. We're mm -hmm. mostly playing mm -hmm. historic characters, even if they were real. So it's kind of a joy to be able to not see them in archival footage. There's a, a huge amount of material available. So I'm really doing that deep dive right now because the first deep dive was actually learning the role, which was not a small <laughs> amount of time. Yeah, exactly, no one should. Learning the role, just getting your teeth around what John and Alice have given you is, is a big challenge. Um, right. And, well, and memorizing, it's such a deeply rhythmically complex piece that memorizing has been a real, a real challenge. No question, no question. And this third act dream sequence is very dream sequence in the sense that all the things are happening and all of a sudden Pat and I start talking on off beats and strange beats and then we kind of disappear and that, that is just, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that can be really challenging. thrilled to be part of it, really delighted. I mean, it's exciting for me. It's a, it's a new production in one of the most important opera houses in the world. I think that it's significant that it's an American opera being done in Europe, which slowly but surely is happening more often. There's a lot of opera going on in America that never gets across the water, which is unfortunate. There are marvelous composers in the States that, that the Europeans don't know. so. I really applaud Alexander Neff and team for bringing Bernstein last year and bringing Nixon and, and I know he's got other plans and it's wonderful to feel like the world of opera actually is expanding its repertoire. <laughs>